Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to talk about the imminent collapse of Thames water drowning, if you'll pardon the expression, in a mountain of their own illicit debt. Not only does this allow us to call into question the wisdom of privatising public utilities, but it also allows us to explore ways of nationalising them without falling into the usual Tory traps. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So, the big news today arguably will be the report which has just been published today into the Boris Johnson cultists about the Privileges Committee attacks. But I will be discussing that in my second video today because I want a little bit more time to discuss it. But I also want to talk about this. Now, for those who don't know, Thames Water, by the way, it's the largest water company, and they are collapsing with a debt of about £14 billion. Just to be clear, this was debt built up in order to feed profits and dividends. I would like to remind people that two years ago, when they took advantage of leaving the single market rules and started pumping raw sewage into our waterways at ridiculous levels, they defended their actions by saying it can't be helped because of the crumbling Victorian infrastructure. Now, I have three things to say about that. The first is, all oh, right, so why are we seeing all this pumping out of sewage on such a regular basis only since we left the EU single market? Almost like EU rules protected us from this sort of corporate vandalism, isn't it? Second, when Thatcher privatised water, she promised that the private sector would modernise it. It's the same promise we always get with privatisation. They'll modernise the industry, they'll deliver the same, same great service, better in fact, and it'll cost you less. Because otherwise, why would you privatise it? If it's not going to save you less, it's not going to save you money, the taxpayer money, why would you privatise it? So they have to promise that it'll be cheaper and better. Well, how does that work? Because they need to make a profit. But third, if these water companies were not actually investing in modernisation of their infrastructure, and they weren't because they're blaming crumbling Victorian infrastructure. Victorian days were well, below, well before, 100 years before Margaret Thatcher sold it to them. So if you've still got Victorian infrastructure, where did the debt come from? Why were you borrowing if not to invest? They were debt free as public utilities. This is not historic debt. They built it up every penny. The debt wasn't used on investing in modernisation. We know that. The borrowing was for the purpose, therefore, of maintaining profits and being able to pay out competitive dividends. As, the, as for the regulator, off what? They did nothing. In theory, regulators exist to protect the interests of the consumer and make sure that the private companies delivering these public services do not take the mickey and end up with an unsustainable business model. You know, like £14 billion pounds of unsustainable debt. But in reality, the regulators under a Tory government are not told to prioritise the consumer and under either government, they don't have the teeth to intervene anyway. One of Labour's likely manifesto plum, plum, uh, policies was to give off what much more power to bring piss-taking water companies to heel. In fact, when I discussed Labour's policy proposals for water earlier this year, I said it presents a very interesting path towards nationalisation. Because although Labour are not committing to nationalised water explicitly, they are proposing a series of actions which would make the uh, commercial environment uncomfortable for private water companies. Because up until now, it's been a licence to print money. All this Tory twaddle about competition driving up standards is crap. It is especially crap for privatised water because there is no competition. It's a monopoly. You have different water companies, but they're in different regions, and that is that. The only way you can change your water company is by moving house. Your water company is not chosen by you, the customer, it's chosen by your postcode. But Thames Water is now collapsing under its own greed. The Tory government are drawing up emergency plans to temporarily nationalise it. Now, when I've talked about this prospect before, I have said we have to avoid the obvious Tory trap. People will say, oh, we should just declare the project failed and nationalise them all. But we have to be careful not to spend taxpayer money doing so. Because if we just buy the companies, we pile on more national debt, right? Nobody sees the benefit of nationalisation for years because we would then have to invest even more to modernise the infrastructure like the private companies were supposed to. The prices can't go down because we need the money to invest in the infrastructure. People won't see the benefit for years. The Tories and their press will label the extra debt as Labour ideology spending the public's money for no benefit. Labour would lose the next election. The Tories would flog the nationalised utilities back to their mates again at, at knockdown prices. And that national debt will remain there and be forever labelled the Labour debt pile of shame. 
fatal. But if we nationalise it at no cost, then we still can't stop the Tories selling them off again if we're stupid enough to let them back into power. But we can stop Labour getting the blame for tax and spend and being certain to lose the following election. So there is absolutely a certain appeal in letting the companies collapse. Something that should be even easy with a Labour government forcing them to do their jobs. Remember, this company is collapsing even under a Tory government. How much more so when Labour decide to say, no, you're going to do your job properly. You're not going to pump out a load of effluence. You're going to get fined. And if we fine you, you don't just pass that cost on to your consumer. No, that comes out of your money, that. You don't pass that on to the consumer. And those are very much some of their proposals. But it should, it, you know, it's, it's, it stop them just being able to whack up prices to cover their greed and you make it even more uncomfortable. If the largest water company, even under a Tory government, can go to the wall, so can they all. Tell them, either make privatisation work properly or get out of the way. But the government must not take on the debts. Now, I am not an expert in the field, of course, so I don't know how plausible it is to avoid taking on those debts. Maybe you have to do it a little bit more carefully. But I, what I will say is this. There is one type of debt, unfortunately, the government will have to take on. And this is what complicates things. So I was reading with interest. Thames Water was reported as having shareholders, which includes pension funds. Now, yes, some of them are Canadian American pension funds. It's not for the British government to bail those out. But some of them were British for British workers. Now, this is very common. In fact, the main reason why governments, both Labour and Conservative, are essentially forced to bail out both banks and private companies like this is because they cannot risk pension funds being obliterated. Because it can easily look to a casual observer like if the government bails them out, are oh, you bailing out corporate, corporate greed there, aren't you? And they are. The reason they're doing it is because they cannot afford for people to lose their pensions. You know, for example, quite a few pension funds are considerably lighter after Liz Truss's time in office. The Tories will pay the electoral price for that, if nothing else, from those affected. There is no way a government can allow pension funds to be hit and expect to win the following election. In fact, I'll be honest and, I'll, and say I have honestly no idea why Labour don't keep mentioning that bit. See, some people think that Sunak has at least cleared up the mess left by Liz Truss. No, he did not. He simply stops more pain. But the damage remains. And part of that damage is people's pension funds. Some people's pension funds are now smaller, a lot smaller. But anyway, the government really needs to find a way to nationalise the companies without paying anything, but still compensating the pension funds. Is there a way to legally compensate the pension funds to make sure they're still intact of UK workers without doing so for other investments? That I don't know. I suspect it's not straightforward, but I don't know. And if it isn't, expect Labour, of course, to get a lot of moaning out for not simply walking into the Tory trap, nationalising it at huge cost to the taxpayer, only to see the Tories walk back into power, sell them all back cheap to their mates again, and we're stuck with the debt. But one thing I would absolutely definitely do, one thing I know that Labour absolutely certainly can do, the behaviour of loading up public service companies with massive debts when the borrowing was not used for investment, was not, this borrowing clearly did not have a sound business plan behind it, must be made illegal. You would think it is, but it's clearly not. People are looking at this behaviour and asking, how is this not malfeasance? Well, apparently it's not, but it must be. It must be made to be if it's not. Labour have plans to strike off directors who fail to run their companies properly. No, make the penalty severe. We made a mistake in not prosecuting the bankers who triggered the financial crash of 15 years ago. Gordon Brown later admitted that this was a mistake. We should not make the same mistake again. We cannot allow corporate greed to gamble with our money for their profit, safe in the knowledge that we will bail them out when they lose. No, run things properly or go to prison. And, the, and I'm not saying if someone as business fails or something because circumstances can happen. I mean, if you are recklessly running a business that is going to impact, that for which the government will have to bail you out because it affects, it affects us, it affects the population. No, you will run the business properly or you will go to prison. And the time is absolutely right to make this point to the public. After all, the government are refusing to bail out mortgage holders who will lose their homes because of Tory economic mismanagement. They're not bailing them out but we are going to bail out a greedy corporation that's been pumping shit into our rivers. And consider this further. 
Who are these taxpayers who are going to be bailing them out? The people who are going to who are currently losing their homes, the people who are going to lose their homes as a result of Tory mismanagement, they're all taxpayers. And they are all going to be paying for this bailout for the rest of their lives, even when they have to move out from their lovely home into whatever they can get. They will still be paying for that Thames water greed. How do you imagine they feel about that? They need telling. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.